So if you don't have an iPad or you just want to hook up a drawing app to your drawing tool to your computer, you can use the tablet. Um, there's also like the Adobe Suite is really useful. Um, I used Photoshop for a really long time um, and it's like similar ideas to Procreate. Um, you can also use Illustrator for like vector images if you want to do more uh, graphic design work like InDesign also works um, or layout work. Um, I use Procreate now which works with the iPad an Apple Pencil. Um, it's an app specifically designed for the iPad, um, and it's supposed to highlight the uses of the Apple Pencil. Um, and so today we'll be focusing on uh, Procreate. Um, it's not a free app. I think it's around ten dollars, um, but it allows you to manipulate layers and draw a bunch of different things and make a lot of cool digital art. Um, and uh, also, as a tip, um, sometimes the, I don't have this, but sometimes the iPad can feel like a little slippery. Um, so some people have recommended a matte layer on top of it, like a screen protector, so that it feels like you're drawing on paper or like on a sketchbook. So if you prefer drawing um, using like paper and pencil, but you want to transition into digital art, that would be something that I would recommend. Um, yeah, as Denise said, the Wacom Intuos tablet is great. Um, and also there's like a bunch of portable tablets as well. Um, so if you ever, like the iPad's great because you can walk around with it, but that also um, applies to like a bunch of portable tablets that are compatible with your laptop. Um, so these are just some of the things I'm gonna touch on in a live demo. Um, so we have your gallery view. Um, I'm going to go over this again, like while we're talking, but these are like the things I use the most. So the gallery view is just basically where you see all your art and you can organize it. Um, there's a bunch of tap features. I'm sure there's more than this, but the ones I use the most are two tap. Um, so that undo undoes your work. If you hold the two tap, then it undoes like a bunch of work. Um, I'll show you how, what that looks like. And then if you do three tap, that does redo. And if you do four tap, this is all taps on the iPad. If you do four tap, it just removes all the tools so you can see um, your, just your canvas. Um, sharing, duplicating, deleting your work is important. So sharing allows you to export your Procreate um, to any format like PNG, JPEG, and then you can share it online. Duplicating just allows you to duplicate whatever work you had and then deleting the work. So these are just options on the canvas, on the actual piece itself. Um, layers and background color are really important. We'll go into that in the live demo, but um, I just wanted to point out that like most people, why this is great, why digital art is great is because you can use different layers and separate out the outline and your color and it'll be like, it'll be as if you can like do tracing paper. Um, so if you have like a preliminary sketch that you want to trace over, you can just make a new layer. Um, and like that's, sort of like what I like about digital art. Um, manipulating your screen size is something that you can do also. I find the opacity and brush size also super useful. So opacity is basically um, like how transparent your brush will be. Um, so it's helpful when you wanna do um, preliminary sketches or when you wanna color it in um, and not do like the full color. Um, and then brush size like allows you, it's like a paintbrush, so you can use different sizes. Um, and Procreate also allows you to animate, um, which some people might not know. So I'll touch on that at the end. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now. It's gonna be a little laggy. Um, I didn't realize, um, but I'll show you some of how I draw. So if anyone has questions now, it would be a good time, um, just cause I have to get set up on that iPad really quickly. It shouldn't take too long. In the meantime, if you have a favorite tool that you like to use with your iPad or whatever, in addition to what we've mentioned already, that would be an awesome thing to pop into the chat. Um, we'll be sending a follow-up email that just has whatever resources we mentioned in this, um, in this webinar today.
and I think I popped in the um, paper-like thing that I use to cover my iPad. Um, it really helped me, like before I had that, I had problems with sketching. Um, it's also a way to protect your iPad screen. Um, yeah, would be great to hear about what brushes you recommend. Yes, there are a bunch of brushes on Procreate. Um, we also have a comment that iPad Educational Edition is good for newbies. Um, yeah, so, and it looks like you're ready, Goo. Yeah, okay, so this is my gallery view. So this is where all my art is. Um, it really helps. So this is my Animal Crossing comic. It really helps because you can use stacks. Um, so for instance, like if I selected, um, if you click select on the top right, um, you can just select multiple and you can just click again on the top right stack and it allows you to create a new stack. So you can see on the second row, I have a stack of like images that might belong together. So I really like the gallery view because you can just see all your art um, and just group them together. Um, so these are some of my sketches so far. This is a picture of Pikachu. Um, you can see that this is just one layer of outline because I didn't color anything in. But um, if I wanted to make another layer, I can just put it below this one and just start coloring in and it won't mess with my um, like line art at all. So you can see that is true. And then if you want to mess with the opacity, um, it's just the on the left side, you can see the sliding bar. If you can see it sliding, you can see that the opacity is going up and down. Was there a question? Yeah, there's a question. There are some questions about brushes. Uh, looks like people would like some help with like navigating brushes and choosing brushes and maybe how to make a brush. If okay. that fits in with what we're doing today. I've never manipulated the brushes, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the brushes that I use. So um, the brush that I like the most is the, um, I really like the inking brushes. So I think ink bleed is really nice because it looks like, um, it basically looks like a pencil. So I really like this one. And it's nice because when you go on the, you can kind of just like, go harsh and it looks like you're drawing on paper. Um, so this one's nice, especially for doing a sketch that you want to outline over. So like, for, and also when I draw, I tend to use circles um, to outline the body. And just like really circular shapes. So this, this is the brush I like again. Um, again, this is ink bleed. Um, if I wanted to use like a more, um, when I do more graphic design work, I tend to use the studio pen just because that allows for like a cleaner outline. So if I want to do something like more official and someone's like commissioned me to do something, I usually do an outline in um, the studio pen. And it's really nice because you can make all these shapes. So if you ever wanted to make a circle, you can just do the circle and hold this. And then if you wanted to make a line, and it looks pretty good and even as opposed to the other pen where it's not so much. I know you can manipulate pens. Um, so, oh, sorry. Um, so I haven't really done it this much, but it's really nice because you can kind of see. So if I ever wanted to have, sometimes I want designs where um, I have like circles separated out, so it's nice to mess with the spacing of it. Um, in terms of streamline, I haven't really manipulated it that much. Um, but it's nice because you can test it right here, like to see how it works. So um, this has been nice. I've definitely messed with the jitter and the spacing because it's nice because you can have this effect, like if you ever want to draw snow and stuff. Um, it's always important to like increase spacing and the jitter. Sometimes it's hard to get back to where you were. Um, but yeah, also this fall off has been nice because um, if you want more luminous effects or 
um, you wanted to draw something that was like, I tend to use this if I want to draw something that's like, it looks like something's fading away. So it's nice to have that. Um, in terms of pressure, you can also adjust that as well. Um, but yeah, so it's, so whatever you do, you can just test it out. Um, but the pens that I use the most are just the ink bleed and the studio pen. Um, so I'm just going to go through a little bit of the process that I normally do um, when I'm drawing. So I'm just going to draw a person because I think a lot of people have been wondering about how to draw people, um, especially people who aren't like, um, like you want to make your comics um, diverse and or like inclusive and you don't necessarily want to draw um, a person that's like of a particular race or gender. So sometimes you like and you don't necessarily want to draw stick figures, so those are fine. Um, so this is just the kind of person that I draw in my zines um, or in my comics. Um, so again, I use circular shapes. It always helps to draw a circle for the head and at least like have an understanding of where the eyes are. Um, just uh, to quickly interrupt, we have one question. Um, how do you open a blank page when you first start after you download it? Where do you open the page? Yeah, that's a good question. I meant to get into that. So if you see the plus screen on the top right, um, or the plus icon on the top right, you can see me opening it right now. It says new canvas. Um, sorry, I meant to get into this actually. But um, you can see that you have a bunch of different options for screen sizes. So if you want to make a new um, canvas, you just um, you can do a custom size. If you want it to be the entire size of your iPad, um, you can just do screen size. So now this is the entire uh, size of my iPad. And if I wanted to just get rid of the tools and just draw in this freeform, I just do four taps and it gets rid of the tools. And then I can just draw. And if I want the tools back, you can see, I can just do the four taps again. And then the tools are back. Um, and then, so you have a bunch of different options for screen sizes. Um, on the bottom of the new canvas uh, toolbar, you can see that you can create a custom size. Um, so this is like whatever number you want. Um, I'm not going to make it that number. Um, I like to use the square size, especially if you're doing art on Instagram. Um, like there's a bunch of different communities. I actually started on Tumblr and DeviantArt um, and since then have deleted my DeviantArt because it used to be um, a lot of really, it was just like the fan art that I liked when I was a teenager and I was like, oh no, people can't find this. <laughs> but um, that was a good place to start for me. There's like a bunch of different online art communities. If you're really into pixel art, for instance, like I know Gaia is a really good place and I know that like there's a bunch of pixel artists on Animal Crossing who are doing custom pixel art design. Um, so there's like really great communities online for art. Um, I really like Instagram just because um, there's a lot of artists on Instagram. Um, it's not necessarily, it's like a nice way to just share your work um, with a large audience, um, but there's definitely a bunch of different ones. And if you ever are looking to start in digital art, um, I know Patreon is also a good way to get um, people to like support your artwork and just pay like a monthly fee and a lot of artists do procreate workshops um, like if you pay if you're a patron of them and you pay them like three dollars a month um, they will like give free procreate workshops or like talk about their process um, I'll, t I'll link a bunch of different artists that I like that use procreate um, and you can see their work as well. It's very different. Like all the artists are very different um, and do very different things. We can send this out in our post, our post workshop email. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to draw a person and then I'm going to animate. And I think that will be it for the workshop. So this is what I usually do. If I, if I like want a more complicated thing, I like will add more limbs. So this like this can be arms. I just really like circles because I think that's helpful because then you can just like outline. I mean, this is like a, he's in a very weird shape, but <laughs> like for instance, like you can just like act as those are hands, but I'm just going to draw a small person. 
Um, I'm going to just draw him or her then. Um, just going out and then he has a little paintbrush. He had a little paintbrush. Um, and then um, one thing you can do, something I usually do is I change the background color. So oh, if you have a, have a question about erasing, how do you erase? Okay, so on the on the top right, um, there's an eraser tool. It's next to the layers tool. So you can see on the top right, there's a brush, there's a finger, there's an eraser, there's layers, and then there's color. So the eraser tool, you can just erase like this. And you can even see, if you tap on the eraser, you can use different brushes for erasing, which is really helpful. Um, and then if you really, if you want to undo, you can just do two taps and that does undoing. Um, if you hold it down, it'll undo everything. But um, if you want to just redo everything, you can just do, you can do three taps. Um, so I'm tapping the iPad with the three of my fingers and then you can hold it and it'll just redo everything. Oh, I think I accidentally drew on this. Um, you can also use um, on the on the middle left, you can see that there's like undo and redo buttons next to the opacity. So you can see right now I'm moving the opacity, but you can just see that under that there's like undo and redo buttons that I'm tapping. You can probably see that I'm tapping them. Um, okay, and now um, when I go into my layers on the top right, um, you can see that um, I can use my studio pen and I can just outline this. We have a few more questions, but I think some of these we'll save until after um, Gu is done with her presentation. Okay, I'm almost done. So um, you can see that layer one is the outline and layer two is the, sorry, layer one is the sketch that I went over and layer two is the outline. And something that I can do is I can like move the opacity around. Um, and so like, it makes it more clear that it's the outline and I can just go over it if it's too harsh. Um, and then I can delete it now that I don't need it anymore. Um, and if I wanted to create another layer, I just add the, I do the plus icon and then I can move it around. So I can move it below and then um, I can now color this person in. That using layers is really something that blew my mind when I figured out that I could do that. It kind of changes everything. Yeah, and you can actually um, merge the layer so that if you just want one layer and like um, you can just use the merge down. Oh, I don't know why it's not showing up. Oh, it is showing up. Um, and you can just merge down the layer. And now you just have one person. Um, and then if you want to animate, you can just, it'll just do animations based off of layers. So if I duplicate this layer, um, and then, oh, sorry, I always forget where this option is. Um, if I just duplicate this layer, so you can see in your settings, um, you can do paste if you want to add. Um, I can just move this arm. This is gonna be super simple, sorry. This is um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then you can just move this arm and like recolor this in. Mm. So these are two separate layers. Um, and then you can just, um, if you share it, Oh wait, I don't have the option that you need. Anyway, you can usually share it as a GIF, but for some reason I don't have that option right now. And it'll just use the animations as, it'll use the layers as an animation. So this guy, this person will like wave, basically. Oh, that's so cute. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm gonna try this later. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's not showing up for some reason. I think. 
I think I might need to update. Anyway, um, that's it for now. Um, do people have any more questions? There's a bunch of other tools, um, like especially when you want to, if you really like a brush and you like manipulated it around, you can hold on, you can like add it as a favorite usually. Let's see, we have a question from Enrique about colors. Um, and so, I, let's see, I can't figure out switching between the primary and secondary colors. So in the palette, yeah, all of the palette stuff is a little confusing to me on Procreate. Um, so anything about like managing your colors and things like that. I usually just, for all the colors I use, I put, um, I like use a big brush. I do this on a separate layer, actually. So if I want to use a bunch of different colors, I just put it on, like, as if it was, like, um, I forget what those things are called <laughs> when you put paint on it. Um, palette? Yeah, no, but when I use the palette, um, I just, like, put all the colors on a canvas, and then you can... If you hold down the iPad with one hand, you can just get the selection. You can get the like tool that basically samples your color. Um, so if I ever want to like remember a color or understand my color palette, I usually just put it on the top right um, and sample it. So I'm going to do that for sure. Because I always mess up my colors with the palette and I, yeah, <laughs> this is a good tip. Um, what brush did you use for filling the body color? Um, I usually use, I honestly, the only brushes that I use are the studio pen and the dragging pen. Like you, you can use any of the brushes, but I prefer just the combination of those tools for what I do. Um, but it really depends on what you do. I've used a Gillespie ink tool for ink, like writing too, um, just because it's like a fun tool to write with if you want to like look like you use marker. That's my favorite brush. Yeah. We have a question about comparing um, Procreate and Photoshop. Um, is Procreate a much better experience? I like Procreate because um, I, I think they're really similar. I, pr I haven't used Photoshop actually in an entire year now. Um, I just like Procreate because it's on the iPad and I can like take it around more, whereas like Photoshop um, I don't know if there's an iPad app or if you, even if you can use it on the iPad. Um, yeah, I don't think so. I like I have yeah. Photoshop too, but I, um, yeah. Yeah, I just find the Wacom tablet like it's it's really nice if I don't really have like a desk or a workspace. Um, so it's really nice that I can like walk like take around my iPad. But if you have like a desk and a workspace and like a comfortable um, area to like put your tablet and your computer in like Photoshop is great um, and I think the I think you can manipulate it a little bit more um, I remember being able to do like slightly more in Photoshop than I could do in Procreate let's see we have we have one question that looks advanced to me I would not know how to answer this but maybe you do um, from Nydia and thanks for joining Nydia will you be covering masks and alpha locks, trying to understand how we can do background colors or scoped layers. I, the only thing that I use alpha locks for is when, so basically like if you do an alpha, you can click on a layer. Um, and what? I'm not gonna go over a mask, but if you, I like alpha locks because you can change the color. So if you lock it and you like realize that you didn't like a color, um, then you can just like go over whatever I mean, this is the whole layer, but you can just go over like the color instead of using like, I'm like, oh, I didn't like yellow and I want to make it orange. Like, this is nice for that. What um, is an alpha lock? I think it just, I don't know the official reasoning behind it, but it just basically locks in um, whatever you drew on the layer. Um, oh, okay. You're saying, it's saying like, oh, you can't change anything about it. Um, and then you can like go over it. And the only things you can manipulate are the things that have been drawn on the layer, as opposed to when you don't alpha lock it, um, you can just draw willy nilly like this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll try to pick up it. Can Procreate 
autofill something and how did you, yeah, so can, pro, can you get Procreate to autofill a shape or fill, like fill a shape? I know you can just autofill a background. So if you do background color, I don't see a, oh, that was one thing. I never saw a paint bucket tool to fill something. I, I've been able to do it and I'm trying to remember how I do it, but it's like if it's a closed shape, then I think you can, like if you draw a circle or a square or something like that. You can, um, uh, you can drag and drop the circle color in the right top right corner yeah. directly onto the canvas. Which does the background. Um, and then if you have a closed shape, I think it just yeah. fills in your closed shape. Yeah. Let's see. And then how did you make Studio Pen create a circle? I think you showed that, but maybe show it one more time. I did. I really like doing that. Um, it, it's really nice if you like want to draw the moon. <laughs> but, <laughs> so uh, you can do this with any pen. If you just draw a circle and you just hold the pen at the end, it'll just automatically go into a circle. It's the same thing for lines too. If you draw a line and you hold it, it'll just automatically go into a straight line. Um, we have a little person on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Our little person looks like an astronaut with a circle around their head. <laughs> <laughs> um, separate and yeah, it was what was that marker brush called? So some of this it's just the Lessy ink. And I've always wanted to know more about why it has that particular name, but I've never been able to find anything. <laughs> Let's see. There is now a new, now a Photoshop for the iPad, useful tool, but just a subset of what Photoshop on desktop can do. Yeah, Adobe has iPad app called Fresco, which attempts to be natural media drawing tool with some functionality appropriate. Um, but Procreate is really best for drawing on an iPad though. Thanks for that comment, Joe. Um, and let's see, bucket fill, yeah, covered that. Paint bucket. You can drag color in it, yeah. Yep, close shape. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, I think that gets us through all the questions. If I've missed a question, let me know. And then if you have another question, feel free to pop it in there. Um, I didn't realize you could do the four taps thing. Yeah, usually you can import it as a GIF too when you do share, but for some reason mine's not popping up. So you might have to look into that, but it'll just basically animate this. Um, in terms of, um, you can also, something that I've recently found is that you can do a drawing guide. So I, I usually like flip my iPad by accident and then I don't draw straight. Um, like all my things will be slanted. Um, so if you go into settings next to, on the top left, um, it's nice because you can have a drawing guide that basically shows you where things are straight. Um, and you can manipulate the canvas, you can share, um, Manipulate the preferences, stuff like that. And do we have favorite additional drawing sources or learning Procreate, learning digital art, drawing fundamentals? Oh, there are so many. Um, do you have particular ones that you like, Goo? I honestly like, um, YouTube is really helpful, but a lot of the videos are the same. It's hard to find, if you watch one Procreate video, it's like kind of hard to find like the new tips because all of them kind of introduce the same thing. Yeah. Um, I really like following an artist and just seeing how they draw. I think that's been really great for me, especially if I really like the artist. Putting some of in the wrap up email. Yeah, we can. Um, one place that I have learned to level up my own sketching and illustrating um, is society I think it's Society of Visual Storytellers. And that community is specifically, it was created by a couple of people who work in animation, but it 
is video classes specifically for learning how to um, illustrate. And some of it is on the iPad, some of it is not. Some of it is basics like I took a really great color theory class from them that really helped me understand colors. And of course that um, can help in if you're in a, in a tech job as well. Um, yeah, color theory. And we had some other questions about, yeah, so we already talked about locks a little bit. Um, I also suck at using masks. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I really don't really use them. Um, I know they're, they're supposed to help you, like, edit something without destroying it, but it's not something that I use in a day-to-day -day thing. If someone uses it and wants to talk about it, I'm happy to give the floor, but um, it's not some, it's pretty advanced and it's not something I ever use day-to-day. -day. Yeah, I think uh, that's probably outside the scope of this section. It just sounds more advanced. Um, and someone's mentioning Dribble Blog is a great resource too. Um, that totally makes sense. And, um, oh, there's one question I have, let's see, um, which is, I would love to hear about your process for creating some of the illustrations for a Let's Sketch Tech. Um, oh yeah, so I have a bunch of, where are they? I have a bunch of illustrations for Let's Sketch Tech. Oh, here they are. Um, I don't know what the top two are. Um, <laughs> you can also delete. It's nice because you can like select and delete um, and then duplicate and share. Um, I think I need to update my Procreate app because it's not showing me the GIF option. But um, basically what I've done is we have a bunch of speakers coming up um, and also a bunch of different things. Um, like workshops and stuff. So I've been doing the doodles for that. Um, it's kind of a similar process from what I showed you, which is that um, I just have uh, one layer that's um, sort of an outline layer. I don't have one for this, but it will usually look something like a circle, another circle, and another circle. Mm -hmm. and that's honestly the basis of how I do it. And then um, it's just a drawing. Like the, sh the things I do are actually pretty simple. Um, and I think a lot of people can just like mimic what I do. Um, and because like a lot of these are just like dots and circles. Um, but yeah, I've just been drawing the people based off of that outline. Um, and then I've been using the circle tool. Um, something that Procreate doesn't let you do is it doesn't let you put type in. Um, so that's something that's really nice about Photoshop is that you can like add type. Um, oh, so but, uh, like, I think you I've can. been writing. You can? I think so. Tap on the, yeah, there should be like a text something in there. Seems like I did that recently. Okay, I have never been able to find the tap tool, the text I'll, tool. I'll, I'll try to prove my statement. I'll look for it online if I can, if I can do that and explain it before we break. Because <laughs> 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 that somewhere. Um, but yeah, and change settings on time lapse. Um, any other questions for Goo in this um, about using Procreate, managing your sketches, working with layers, things like that? Um, so here, I'm gonna turn on my. Where is the color? Okay. It's just on um, the top right. You can just yeah. manipulate the colors here. It'll, you can like use um, any form, like the, the shape or the classic shape. It's all on the bottom of the, like you click on the top right, which is the color, and this will change the color of your brush. Um, and you can like, you can even do it off of hex value, which I don't normally do. Um, so I can tell you where to find the text. It is. Okay. I've never been used this tool. If you, yeah, you probably want to go to a different one, but uh, yeah, is there, 
So on my iPad, I see something that says add text. So maybe a little update or something. And it also lets you um, use a photo. Like, I'll just show, I'm just gonna hold this up and who knows, maybe it'll work. But here's a photo. Um, so you can see, like here's a photo that I imported. This is David Hockney, he is one of my favorite artists. But what I did was I imported the photo and I just wanted to color. I didn't feel like drawing. <laughs> so I have all these layers that are different colors. Um, if you use layers, I love using layers, but yeah, so that's on my, and you can do a bunch of coloring like this. And then after you finish coloring, you can take away the photo. <laughs> and get something interesting. So this is a, this is like a way to, um, like I see this question, are there such things as drawing katas or exercises? Katas is a little bit culturally appropriative, so I like to use exercises instead. For hopeless people to get started, maybe just try coloring, you know, import a photo, uh, get used to the tools and stuff, um, and play around with how do you make a line? How do you make a circle? Things like that. Let's see. I think we're about out of time. If there's, is there one last question? Sure. Um, I'm a little curious about your process for thinking about what to draw before you put pen to paper. How did you decide to draw the circle to frame? Um, Jamie, for example. So. Uh, maybe just a little bit about that to wrap up. That's actually like, that sounds like a segue into another, another uh, class, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, also if people have any Procreate creations, you can tweet them out um, and just tag Let's Sketch Tech, um, even if it's just your first one. Um, in terms of my process, I honestly um, just think about, I honestly use circles a lot. Um, the thing that I normally do is I actually just look at different artists and how they format work. Um, and then I just riff off of that. Like, I think one of the best things to do is to just see what other people are doing. Um, so for instance, for like the less sketch tech stuff, um, there's like, there's multiple formats for speakers. So one that I've seen people use is like a circle photo of a speaker. This is usually on websites. Um, and then I was like, oh, it'd be cool if I could just do a doodle of that. Um, so I would just look at inspiration. Cool. Um, well, I think that is all we have time for today. Thank you so much, Gu, for um, putting together this awesome workshop. I know I learned a few things. I hope everyone else did as well. And um, if you haven't bought your ticket yet for Let's Sketch Tech, We'll have more content like this, um, and we hope that you'll be there. Um, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Keep keep sketching. And Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>